uh, why we are talking, re reflecting about some um, act behavior. So, um, this talk today is, it's, are there different types of suicide? So we're talking about unintentional suicide. So not methods of not committing, but yes, not we're not going to talk about um, which kind of method can I use to commit a suicide. We are going to talk about something different, something that is related to a suicide, but we don't see like it, like like one. Like one. So. Is there an intentional suicide? Yes. Yes. That you're gonna see in a minute. But how does it occur? An intentional suicide. And how can we avoid committing it? So we are gonna talk a little bit about each of these questions, each of these reflections trying to bring more awareness because sometimes we are not aware what we're doing to ourselves, to our body that Eric kindly reminds us that we need to take care of. We are invited to take care of our body with love, with um, good habits, good behaviors, good thoughts. Good thoughts. Right? So then uh, in order to understand very well about what is intentional or unintentional suicide, I went to the dictionaries for intentional suicide. And what says is the act or an occasion of taking one's own life voluntarily and intentionally. So this was brought for Renata as well at the first beginning when she brought the beginning of the the um, definition of the name suicide. Su, so, self, and uh, sight is kill, kill, kill your, ourselves. But regards to an intentional suicide or indirect suicide, I got this uh, definition. Occurs when the actions or behaviors of a person indirectly causes their death. This uh, definition was brought by Edwin Schneidman. It's, um, this is um, an American clinical psychologist and suicidologist oh. and thanatologist. I don't know if I'm saying correctly, <laughs> but this, uh, um, he, is uh, he was specialized about suicide behaviors. He wrote, he wrote 20 books about how to prevent suicide. And he founded in Los Angeles a suicide prevention center from uh, early 50s and early and late 60s. So um, he is very aware what is suicide. So he brought this uh, definition about an unintentional or indirect suicide. So it's a kind of behavior or kind of actions that drives a person to commit, to harm, to hurt their selves, indirectly or unaware that they are doing that. So let's talk a little bit then about e each of these kinds of suicides. So intentional suicides, Let's remind a little bit about the numbers that Renata brought to us. Here, just, just about Canada, okay? About 4,000 people each year commit suicide in Canada. An estimate of 20 to 25 attempts. For each? For each death. death. Yeah. death. For each of those 4,000, yeah. 20 to 25 people try. Try. And there is difference between men and women. Normally, women try more, attempt more. Uh, an average of 10 people per day. And seven to 10 people profoundly affect of each death. 
So these include family and friends, close friends. They are profoundly affected by each death that occurs in their family or their friends. And 24% of the deaths among young people between 15 and 29. So all these uh, numbers are brought from the same source as Renata and from Kaiser Services Canada. And as this uh, organization, like Renata, reminds us, there are many others that help people under these conditions. But I would like to talk about what family and close friends could do, with how they can recognize that a, a, a family member or a friend is passing through this uh, situation, that is having this kind of th thoughts. So, what the obvious? So let's go through the obvious signs. Be actually, between uh, before the obvious, uh, this is are the, the not the obvious signs. Actually, this is the signs that are more uh, less obvious. But the obvious signs, of course, it is. Uh, talking about death or writing about death or talking about how to methods of killing themselves mm -hmm. or looking in on the internet and um, and besides that um, when people are um, hurting their selves when they are attempt against their selves so those are obvious signs that everybody knows, okay, this person is trying to kill herself. But how about the less obvious ones? So let's go through now. So there are an increased toxic substance use. Can be alcohol, can be drugs. Feelings of helplessness or hopelessness. Like Renata said, no sense of purpose in life. Anxiety, agitation, or uncontrolled anger. Unable to sleep or sleeping too much all the time. The person's kind of trying to run away from something. Feelings of being trapped. So there's no way out, like Renata remember us. There is no way to get out of this situation. Withdraw from families, uh, family members, friends, and society. Acting recklessness or engaging in risky activities. Sometimes seemingly without thinking. I was not. I was not thinking when I was driving so fast, no, or dramatic mood changes, person is or too nice or too euphoric, like with that kind of joy that it's not very common, or a person is very sad, that don't want to talk, don't want to be with anybody, there is a change, a high level of change. So it's important we don't try, we, we try not to um, don't pay attention or don't care when we see people like acting like that. We need to understand that this person is passing through for some situations. And like Renata said, the elephant, we need to try to talk because talking it's so important, it's, from, it's really important because the person feels that there is a connection, there's somebody that cares about, somebody that can help. It's not the talking about suicide, sometimes people want to, people say that it's a kind of um, secrecy, it's kind of, um, Thing that we cannot, yeah, we cannot talk about that because this you're gonna bring the person think more about that. No, there are research that shows that the likelihood that a person will try 
to kill themselves when they talk about that is less because they feel there is a connection. They want to talk. They want to be understanding. So this is about intentional suicide. Okay, so that's the difference. Now we're gonna see the difference between unintentional suicide. So this infographic I brought from um, C CBC News and shows um, some numbers relate to use of alcohol, drugs, um, medicines, and the death that occurs because of this, uh, because of the use, the alcohol and drugs. So more than 400 Canadians are hospitalized because of harm from harm, alcohol or drugs. More than for heart attacks and strokes combined. Like Renata shows us, there are more, suicide kills more people than uh, war or <coughs> homicides. And 10 Canadians die in hospitals from harm caused by substances use. These substances, again, can be toxic substances like drugs, alcohol. Three in four deaths are due to alcohol. So, in fact, there is an estimate of four to five million of Canadians engaging in high risk drinking. So drink too much and being this, this the, 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 the fact that they are drunk, they drive and they are involved in accidents. And um, besides, the accidents, they are also in uh, harm their bodies. So there is a risk to get some dis disease, some illness like cancer, or liver cirrhosis that we need to be uh, aware of and we are doing with our own body. It's long-term drinking, right? It's a long-term drinking, but mm -hmm. it's important to be aware that how damage can be all this because it's toxic substances again. And for this is more related to alcohol and drug use, but we have another substance that is that is smoking. So each day, a hundred Canadians die of smoking-related deaths. This is this are cancers, cardiovascular, and respiratory diseases. Also, there are people that are exposed exposed to smoking, so secondhand smoke. So, for these people, eight thirty one deaths among Canadians adults in two thousand two. They died because they are exposed to a person that is smoking. 3,987 apparent opioid-related deaths in the country in 2017. That drives to a reckless behavior, and that includes not only driving or using a seat belt, but also um, to have multiple partners without protection and without uh, doing exams for HIV. So they are also in this group of risk of unintentional suicide. And overdose as well? Overdoses, yeah. Okay. This is all, they don't say that it's the, that's the cause, they say mm -hmm. apparent opioid related yeah. deaths. Depression. This depression mostly, don't, and people don't look for help, but depression can um, make people sometimes go to uh, drinking or to use to, to drug use, so they can feel relief. But this, it's a sensation that is a short term, because the the toxic substances will not cure the problems that they have inside, the feeling that they have inside caused by the depression. Or sometimes the, it's the contrary. Those kind of um, behavior can 
drive to depression, can lead us to the depression. So to be aware that we're not feeling well, that some, there are some feelings inside that needs to be looked, that needs to be uh, treated, needs to be cared of, and not looking for, uh, for some external health that is, you're not going to solve our problems. So people with this group of depression, they can look for, they, like I lead you used to say, they die in life. They are mentally dead. They, they don't see purpose in life. They don't see why they are here. They don't see joy in anything. They, everything is gray. Nothing is colorful. Not, there is no hope. So like Renata said, more than 90% of the suicides that are committed in Canada is due to uh, some mental health. Uh, there is this uh, abortion too. There is um, a kind of indirect suicide caused by unbalancing of chakras. For each abortion that a woman commits, that a woman, have, that a women, uh, a woman has, there is an unbalancing of the chakras. So our chakras become um, uh, do you mean, uh, release the energy power and that dri uh, can drive to some uh, diseases or some illnesses. So all these acts drive us to a premature death. And talking about premature death, that it's, this is not a term that I, I'm using because that what comes from my head. No, this comes from this website of Canada Health Canada. Uh, and this is uh, about um, tobacco. So there is a research about how is the expect expectancy of life of Canadians. Oops. And in Canada, males are expected to live about 70, 78 years, and females 83 years. This is the expectancy. And this is a research from 2011. Okay. But because of the smoking habit, the estimate now is males that smoke, no, smoke uh, male smokers, 71 years old. And females smokers, 73 years old. So there is a um, cutoff, an average of 10% of the life expectancy. So people are living less because they are, um, they are harm themselves, they are hurting their bodies. So to, um, this, this, these are all data from scientific researches. So this comes from Health Canada, uh, doctors are saying, uh, the media are, is saying. How about spiritism? What does spiritism says about this kind of suicide? So we see in the memoirs of a suicide from Ivone Pereira by the spirit of Camilo C. Branco, um, this book, it's about um, a person, a writer, a Portuguese writer, that uh, after his exp he tells in this book his experience after death, after commit suicide, and um, in one of the chapters there is a um, very uh, good message, a warning message actually from one of the mentors of the institution, where uh, the writer is hospitalized, and he's telling this message about, he's uh, giving this warning about um, people that are there recovering from indirect suicide. So let's see. But they knew they were harming their the health and would end up in the grave before the opportune time for a sin in the cause of creation. They were warned about this by the healthcare providers 
they consulted when they mainly excess brought organic melodies to their physical bodies. Yet, they continued practicing this crime against them, their selves. They could feel the depressing effects of their noxious vice on their physical structures. Yet, they continued without making the, last, the least attempt to change their ways. Consequently, they killed them themselves slowly, consciously, fully aware of what they were doing because they had plenty of time to reflect on it. Obsessed by their vice, they committed cold and degrading suicide. So, it's very clear here that when there is a fully aware, there is conscious that the harm that we are causing to our body, that we are in a vital circles where we cannot be without the toxic substance, but at the same time we know that that toxic substance is killing our body, so we are aware that we are killing ourselves slowly and continually. So it's a, a very serious warning about these conditions that many, many people are. Many people are in this pathway and they are not aware between quotes, right? Because there are lots of information on there. Health Canada, there are lots of information. All the, all, on the internet, there are many information about any kind of smoking or, or alcohol or drug use. There are information for everything. But we need to know, we need to be aware that the, call, that the harm that we are causing to ourselves. But I will, this is a, a message from this book that it's a, a, a book that I recommend to everyone to read because there's so many information there. But also, we have in the Spirits book a question that uh, Alan Kardec asked to the Spirits where he asks, does he commit suicide who falls a victim to the excessive indulgence of passions, which he knows will hasten his death, but which habit has converted into physical necessities? Because people can say, okay, I need this because my body is hurting, I need to have this drug. That like is unable to control, I cannot control, I need that. What the spirit says is, he commits moral suicide. Do you not see that a man in such a case is trebly guilty? For he is guilty of a want of firmness, of the sin of bestiality, and a forgetfulness of God. So, I would like to go through some words some wording here. We need to remember this was written in the 1857. So the most of the words that were used by that time were very similar to the what the church used to use. Condemn, punishment, guilty. So let's try to resignify some words here and understand others. So trebly guilty. Probably, uh, the dictionary says that is uh, triplement, three times, three times more guilty. But guilty, we need to resignify this word. Guilty means responsible. It's more responsible because everything that we do, we have in back the consequences of our own acts. When the spirit says, firmness, means lack of courage, moral courage. Courage to face the problems in a meekness way, in a humble way, in a, a way that, <coughs> how can I learn from this situation? What can I learn? 
to have the moral courage to to come back to God, like here, and forgetfulness of God, to seek God's help, because He, God, is infinite love, and He will in mercy, and He's there to help us. It's just us that we need to go towards God, because He's around us all the time. Regards to bestiality actually means disapproving behavior that is very true. But this is our behaviors to ourselves. It's very cruel to ourselves. Sometimes we are very cruel to ourselves because we don't admit that we commit mistakes. That some problems that are, I'm having now, that I'm facing now, is due to some situations that I created in the past. And this is just the consequences. How can I fix that now? How can I look to that situation and try to search myself the strength that I need to um, learn from there? That if I can choose my, my knowledge to know, OK, I can fix that or not. If I cannot fix, at least I need to be resignated and ask God to help that situation be fixed somehow. And Kardec keeps asking the same, the same context to the spirits and then the question 952a. Is such a man more or less guilty than he who kills himself from despair? So he wants to know if the person that commits suicide slowly and continuously towards the using of toxic substances is uh, more or less guilty than or responsible than the one that in an act of despair can kill himself. So the spirit says he is more guilty or more responsible because he has time to reflect on the suicidal nature of the course he was pursuing. Like the mentor had brought to us in the memoirs of a suicide, time to reflect. They were aware of they were doing, so they are more responsible. Or in, like in the, the question bef before, Probably guilty because they they knew what they are doing. So there is always an invitation for learning because most frequent causes of suicide is due to a painful state. Why? Because we are on a planet of trial and expiations. So everybody has problems. Everybody, or if it's not passing through for some situation that is hard to deal right now, passed in the past, some in some point of their lives, in our lives, we, we had to face some tribulations in life. Because that's the, the nature of this globe that we are now. The Earth is a planet of trial and expiations. So it's the disappoints or misfortunes, this is part of the human life. This is part of all of us. And we are invited to see all these tribulations as lessons that will help us to learn the true meaning of life, to seek for the purpose of life. What do we need to learn from this situation? Uh, I'm passing through for some awkward situation that I am shame, I am weak, I am feeling fear, I'm afraid. What I need to try to develop, what I need to learn, anxiety. So for each uh, situation that we are, that, that a difficult conflict that we have, there is a virtue that we are invited to develop. 
there is a virtue that we can learn how to exercise anxiety. I am anxious about tomorrow. I need to practice serenity. How to practice serenity? How to uh, develop courage or moral courage to face um, some turbulences in life? Like Paul said, I am uh, stronger uh, for when I have uh, on Him, on Jesus, that helps me, helps me to be stronger. And we can avoid unintentional suicide. The Gospel of Spiritism, chapter 5, Blessed are the afflicts, item suicide and madness, brings this for us. The calm and resignation, which can be observed according to the manner in which terrestrial life is viewed. So how we can change our view. If we change our view, for the situation that I'm passing through now, if I know that I am a mortal spirit and what I'm learning now, what I'm passing through now is just part of the lesson that I need to learn as a mortal spirit because I'll be, we cannot die. You'll be there after death. And the only thing that we can bring with us are the lessons that we learned are the virtues that we practice, are the love that we learned. Together with confidence in the future, give the spirit the serenity, which is the best preventive measure against madness and suicide. So here is basically the recipe. This is basically the way that we should behave ourselves. If I'm passing through for some conflict time, if I'm passing through for some hard time in life, what I need to try to uh, learn, calm, resignation, knowing that my life is not just this one, my life is, is an infinity, it's true the infinity. I'll be alive forever confidence in the future. God will never give me a weight that I cannot carry. Serenity is the best preventive against suicide. And the gospel in the same chapter, they bring that sometimes we are passing through for some situations that I didn't do anything to passing through for this situation that I'm passing through now. So sometimes not in this life, in this present life, but it brings, sometimes it's some, something that we did in the past. <clears throat> we ask each one whose heart has been hurt by vicissitudes or deceptions to study their own conscience closely, to go back step by step to the origins of each misfortune which is torturing themselves, like as not that they will be able to see. If I had done or not done such and such a thing, I would not be here I am now. So, if you don't find the answers for the situation, some situations that we're passing through now, for sure we are gonna find in our past lives. But sometimes we don't need to know exactly what it did or what we didn't. Do, but the most important is God is love, justice, and um, charity. Mm -hmm. So He will never, never leave us passing through for some situations that we don't deserve to, or we don't. It's not the deserve. The deserve is not the right, the right uh, word, but we don't need to pass through in order to learn. Because that's the purpose of life. We are here to learn how to love ourselves, how to love others. And to remind again what uh, Eric brought to us before the lunch, 
the message from Jesus, come to me all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am a gentle and humble in heart, and you find rest for your souls. So I'd like to leave you with this message from Jesus, and the message that we are here to learn how to be apprentices, apprentices of life. We are not here to give up. We are all loved. We are all loved by God. We are all children of the same dad, the same father. And we are all passing through for some awkward situations sometimes in life, for trials and expiations. There are all invitations for us to learn and to seek, run away from our conflicts, from our um, problems through toxic substances for external methods, you're not bringing the peace that we are looking for inside us. The only peace that we are going to find is in Jesus. With his help, with his, uh, with his love, with his invitation to come to him and to learn from him. Any questions, any comments? Mm? You're welcome. <laughs> you know, it, it reminds me, like, if you have smokers in your family or people who drink, mm -hmm. the, the behavior and some of the things they say, like, oh, everybody's going to die, yeah. so I'll have fun in the meantime exactly. for those who drink, or everybody's going to die, I need my cigarettes, mm -hmm. and it... it it shows exactly what was in that message from the mentor in Memoirs of a Suicide. Excellent. So they're not thinking uh, ahead, they're not thinking more deeply about what they're saying, but even if it's at a superficial level, they know they are killing themselves. They know. But because it's not the, like it's not shooting yourself or hanging yourself, they don't think it will be considered a suicide. A suicide. No. And that there isn't like they a court not. that will judge them. It's their own conscience that's going to go back to them and say, remember all those times when you said everybody's going to die, I'm going to have fun in between. Mm -hmm. Deep down you knew mm -hmm. it was suicide. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it, it's you cannot escape the consequences. No. I just wanted to ask a question that Chris is confusing a lot. It's about to be adrenaline. Mm -hmm. sports that people seek, like the racers, alchemists, things that are for sure the chances of dying are so higher than, you know, not. So how is that seen by Like an unintentional suicide, indirect suicide. Mm -hmm. Because it's, they knew, they know, they know that they, they are taking a risk. They can die. But uh, and this is something that uh, we are we were talking about this week, but we don't. I don't know if you can find a word for this in English. Oh, oh tem yeah, I didn't. Temoridade. What? what is the word? Tem uh, tem 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 it's when you're not afraid right. of you're anything. Not, yeah. And as Sonia was saying, like for some people, they they. Some people are addicted to adrenaline. So mm -hmm. it's not like it's a profession that puts them at risk. They do that voluntarily mm -hmm. out of fun, just for the adrenaline. So it's different from someone who has, for example, a dangerous profession, per mm -hmm. se. Yeah, and this is a kind of behavior for uh, mostly the time for people that are very materialistic, that don't believe that there is anything beyond that death, that die and it's, on, it's done. So you're not gonna have anything after death. So people that want to enjoy as much as possible right now, right here. So they it's they have temerity. Temerity. Temerity, recklessness, precipitation. Mm -hmm. So temerity is linked with recklessness. Recklessness. So recklessness eats uh, a kind of indirect suicide. When you drive fast without being conscious that you can kill yourself or kill others, others. when you are having sex with many people without protecting yourself 
and this is a kind of uh, behavior that, of course, uh, besides the, the disease that you can get from this act, this reckless act, you also um, diminish or reduce the energy of your body, and this can uh, you have can, you can have a premature death, and uh, smoking in all these drugs. So everything that damage our body, our physical body, we are responsible for. So we, we have this present from God for learning, to be here, to experience new um, ways, like ways to learn. And we are treating with recklessness, with ingratitude. So we need to be very uh, aware about that how we treat our body, how we treat ourselves, mind, soul, and body. One of the things that makes me think about uh, people who have suicide thoughts mm -hmm. is the lack of inner love. Oh yeah. Because we know inner love is uh, self-love is, uh, is a virtue. Mm -hmm. So I guess along with the with depression, along with the suicide thoughts, you also think that you are you are not worth it, right? So yeah. you have this lack of self love that we always talk here at FSS that we have to develop as well. Oh yes. So I guess yeah. everything comes together. Yeah. With the, 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 the suicide. Yeah. And, and this is showing in the signs that a person shows when. When the person ha is having this kind of thought, shows some signs, and this is one of the signs that the person shows. Mm -hmm. When seemingly, without thinking, is taking some risks that, why you did that? Why did you jump from that high altitude? Or why did you drive so fast like that? You know, some situations that persons sometimes, that why you do that? that? You don't care about. Yes. But then you can ask why you are a soldier. There's. You know that you're yeah. putting your life in risk. What, what about this? There is, um, I don't, I don't remember exactly what's the part of this, uh, the gospel of spiritism that says about that, that talks about that, that soldier has this duty that it's uh, regards to it's his country, that it's it's more about to the the country, to the the duty that he has in order to go to the war and fight for his country. But it always comes to the intention. What's this in the intention behind the act? If deep inside his intention is just, you know, be killed, then that's the intention that it's more, uh, that he needs to, right? So that, that's a place for everything. Even oh, yeah. for alcohol, for example, mm -hmm. as Renato was saying, if I drink knowing that that's damaging my, 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 my body, mm -hmm. it will impact my life mm -hmm. and it will reduce most likely the years of my life. Same thing applies for anything that I put myself in threat. As I am killing either myself slowly or killing myself in one shot, am I conscious that that could be killing me? And am I doing it voluntarily? And you can call it an intentional suicide. An inte uh, intentional suicide is I will go with that purpose, annihilate my life, mm -hmm. finish my life. The other ones I, I know, but I put the mask, nothing is going to happen, everything is going to be all right. And then something happens. I develop a cancer of smoking after years. Or a cirrhosis. Or a cirrhosis. Or I will jump from the airplane and the parachute won't open. It's just a matter of how conscious I am. And I'm going to share a very interesting thing. Ayrton Senna, before he, he died, 
that day he didn't want to drive. Mm -hmm. And what was most uh, amazing was some security centers the next day receiving elevated message from him. It doesn't exist. Because he was already in a turmoil conscious before it happened. So he knew that he was in danger. So I'm pretty sure that he spent some time struggling with that. That's conscious. That's our conscious. So we, we need to be aware that there is a voice, even though don't do that. Don't do that because it might be the last time you will, as I consider like that. Happen. I know that his case. Like I'm not saying that automobilism is always a threat, racing is always a threat, but they know they're putting their lives in danger. And if at some point, uh, no, it's better to go with the no than the yes. Yeah. Okay. So thank you very much.